Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting on October 13th, 2022. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a pretty light agenda tonight. Um, we had uh, had hoped to have a preview of our facility feasibility study, but um, due to illness, they're not able to be here tonight. So we will uh, turn it over to Ms. Q to walk us through our one agenda item. <laughs> Which I'm just gonna turn the floor over to Ken Matthews. <laughs> Hello, good evening. All right. So just uh, for our typical monthly update for all the projects, I'll start going through it in Randy's, we'll do uh, Chatham Park and Cooperstown. So for Linwood, we're pretty much uh, just about at the end. All the site punch list items have pretty much been taken care of. Um, there's one or two minor items left. We hope to get final inspection from the county um, for all the grass growth, et cetera, here in the coming weeks. And then that is essentially, the, once we get that, then we get the final sign off from the township and everything is 100% uh, complete. Um, then a couple other things going on. The sports netting uh, that was ordered has been on back order. We're trying to get a, a delivery date on that for around the field. And then we just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the gas issues that have been going on, which have been honestly beyond strange. Um, but probably eight or nine months ago, uh, you know, and there's been kind of repeated smell issues at Linwood. The hot water heater we found was running rich. We had the company out, meaning it just wasn't running right. So it was spitting out extra fumes. That's what we thought it was. Um, then fast forward, still got a few complaints and it's, it was probably about four weeks ago now. Uh, there was another gas smell complaint. As with everything between JR staff, Randon or myself, whoever's over there, there's a gas sniffer. Um, the gas manifold, which is all the piping that comes after the Pico meter, there was actually a leak in the pipe, which I can't tell you on any project I've ever been on that after two years since the pipe was installed, it gets tested. Pico won't even hook up to it without it being properly tested for leaks, et cetera. Um, and there was a leak, there was a leak. And then a week later, there was another leak, uh, completely bizarre. They ripped the entire piping apart, put it all back together, and fingers crossed, everything's fine. It's very unlikely. Uh, so then in addition to that, um, JR got the company back out to look at the hot water heater, and the gas control valve in the heater was actually not closing. It was letting gas just pass into the heater. So every time it turned on, it would spit the gas out, the exhaust, which you would smell right at the front of the building. So now that's been corrected. Uh, the valve either was replaced, I forget, or he fixed it. Um, so that's, let's hope, done for now, because honestly, we've never seen anything like it. Uh, we haven't, there's been no complaints, right, Jaron, in the last week? Um, so let's hope that issue is behind us. Can you describe, you said a sniffer. Can you describe oh. what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a small, it's almost a handheld device and it picks up uh, gas smells, so it's a reader, it goes off. It actually kind of beeps, so it's a slow beep, and then if it smells gas, it, it starts beeping very quickly. Um, so you run it all around the joints of the pipe. You know, you run around all the gas uh, <clears throat> manifold, the meters, where's it coming from? We put it up to the exhaust, and the exhaust of these water heaters is supposed to have, it literally has almost nothing coming out. You know, it's gas fired, it's very little. So it was going off like crazy uh, with that. So um, that's how you check, typically check for any type of gas leak. So um, so we kept, it's been over there, it's been sitting over there because of how many leaks there are. So um, if it, hopefully we don't have to deal with it anymore. And when you said the pipe was leaking, is that in the tubing itself or no, just the, at a connection? So it's at a, con at a connection. You put um, pipe dope, which is almost like a Play-Doh, around the, the grooves. You screw it together and that Play-Doh seals it. 
We don't know if it was a bad batch, um, very, very bizarre, but it was coming out of those joints. But the pipe, there was nothing wrong with the pipe. That's what we initially yeah. thought, that Wanted the pipe, make sure. <laughs> pipe was cracked or there was some odd thing like that, but it wasn't. That was actually the, uh, the plumber was first reaction that sometimes the fittings are cracked, but that, that was all checked and everything was fine. Um, so then as far as Linwood financially, uh, nothing's changed. The, the uh, allowances have been zeroed out and the contingency balance is basically held the same at this point. Uh, three of the four contractors are 100% uh, paid at this point and closed out with Stubner uh, being held open until we get all these final inspections done and the last few minor punch list items complete. So again, fingers crossed that should hopefully be done in the next month. Uh, when we come back for the next update. Um, high school phase one, again, that budget's been closed out. The contingency was moved to phase two, and there's just a few uh, dead trees that need to be replaced as part of the warranty on the project, but that everything's done there. Uh, so moving on to the high school phase two, um, you know, everything is, is pretty much just about wrapped up. A uh, few minor punch list items. The green roof was installed. So that's finally, it's about 95% done. They have a few things left to do with it. Uh, they'll do the next day schools off because they have to load some rock, river rock up onto the roof that you put around the edge of the green roof. Um, we're still waiting on a delivery date of the folding partition. It keeps getting pushed from the manufacturer. Uh, the display cases that were uh, not done are finally, they're actually there this evening, putting the last touches on it. So that will be complete. So really, um, at this point, most of the items are done. We're gonna run back through with the engineer and the architect, make sure all the punch list is done. Uh, we get, there's a lot of closeout paperwork we're going through right now, uh, warranties, all of those type of things. Uh, everything we turn over to JR and his staff. We're finishing up some training. Uh, the boilers were finally started up uh, just this past Monday and Tuesday. So they're back up and running, uh, the new boilers in the, in the basement that replaced the uh, three old ones. Um, so really, everything is looking in pretty good shape. Uh, as far as financially, the contingency balance is down to 38,000. And as we discussed over the previous meetings, uh, especially with Conrad, they had a significant amount of allowance money. A lot of it was used for the purpose of the allowance, but now with closing out the project, we took any change orders and put them against the allowance and zeroed, basically zeroed out the allowance with all of those change orders. Um, and there's just a few minor uh, items for $4,000 left for the electrician and the plumbing allowances. So really we're just, you know, we're close to being closed out and in the same fashion, we'll have to get a final inspection from the county, which uh, we should be able to do in the next month as well. Uh, and then it's one, MPDES permit from DEP for both phase one and phase two. So that will close, officially close out both projects with the state. Uh, and then we'll get the final township uh, certificate of occupancy as well. Any questions about the high school? All right, Brandon, you're up. see better than me okay um, so we'll start with uh, with Chatham so in terms of just the punch list there's uh, I think four classrooms of countertops that are still outstanding um, that should be coming in the next two to three weeks uh, they they temporarily have plywood on them right now so there is something there um, and then there was, a, there was an air handling unit that uh, unfortunately with the supply chain ended up coming this week and, and has since been started up. So the only thing outstanding at Chatham outside of the countertops is the chiller, which had the, the very long lead time, uh, which is shipping on the 21st of November. So we're hoping to have everything, all the piping and everything and that started up um, you know, mid-December toward the end of December once the unit gets there. And that is uh, identical for Coopertown as well. They're both shipping on the, on the same day. Uh, but the boilers are running and have been started up and had a little bit of troubleshooting that we needed to do with some control work at both schools, but that has since been taken care of and um, I, everything should be good now for the heating season. Um, 
space too. Everything's there for next summer. Yes, everything's there for next next summer um, for phase two in terms of the material as well. So um, all that is in storage containers on uh, at both schools. All right. Um, so in terms of the allowance um, allowance for uh, both Chatham Park and Coopertown, um, I'm just going to kind of go through some of um, some of the the work that we put toward those allowance um, and then I'll, I'll take questions after. Uh, so in, for Chatham Park, um, there was some additional drywall and paint needed at the library where um, the fin tube, which is essentially the, the, the little radiators that were heating, weren't shown to be taken out. So there was some drywall work that was needed uh, and some paint. So the cost for that was $1,250. Um, at some of the classrooms, there was an additional um, infill of where some carpet came out from an old unit ventilator uh, that we needed to have done. Uh, that was about that was not shown on the drawings. The majority of them were. That was five hundred and fifty dollars. In the library, there was new ductwork going. That when we opened up um, and saw the ceiling, there was a, a beam, so that ductwork had to drop a little bit. So they had to reframe around that ductwork. Um, and, and drive all that out. So the cost for the reframing um, to kind of drop down that bulkhead was $1,000. Um, additionally, on the second floor, we opened up to, um, there was some ex existing duct work that we brought up men previously mentioned that was drilled into, and to open that up, that work um, cost uh, $1,325. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't shown on the on the drawings to open up that drywall work. So, to open that up and put it back cost that amount of money. Um, in terms of the painter allowance, uh, there is a for the a, the new millwork that came. There was an exposed edge inside the sink base of the particle board that we had them paint with some PVC painting, just so that if any water got there, it wouldn't sponge up or anything like that. So we had them take care of that. Uh, that was $330. So that was for the general contractor. For the mechanical contractor, there was um, some existing hot water lines that uh, were in the way of the new units going up into the plenum that had to be relocated. Um, and there's also some other change orders for, for that in the, uh, on, the, on the change order recommendation letter. Um, but for, for this instance, this was a $1,920.96 um, to remove the existing uh, fin tube at the library from the mechanical contractor previously mentioned was $587.51. And then there was an existing air handling unit um, at, at Chatham in the reception back in the, uh, the uh, faculty lounge there. Um, that the ductwork was not shown on the drawings to be removed. So the cost to have that removed was $1,476.88. Moving on to the uh, electrical contractor, um, some items that came up in field. Um, there was some existing outlets that had uh, just a wire mold, a mold very similar to that. For the new units to go in, uh, the outlet had to be moved. Um, so that was in classroom 110. Uh, there was also another wire mold that had to come out completely, which was uh, some, some data jacks that uh, had to be removed in the, uh, the seminar, seminar room, rather, for the, the uh, vertical unit ventilator in there. Um, there was some rewiring that took place of the, uh, the VFDs for the pumps that were called to um, be removed and taken out. But unfortunately, the new pumps uh, became a supply chain um, victim and actually just showed up today. But we had to rewire the old pump to get, to get the pumps, um, the old VFD, sorry, to get the pumps running in the meantime while the other ones were coming in. Could you clarify what a VFD is, please? Uh, variable frequency drive. Um, and then there was uh, the air compressor um, was uh, needed to be rewired. It, uh, the, the power to it was, was uh, taken offline, uh, but then half of the school 
stayed on the old system, so they had to rewire it and put it back on uh, for the next phase for next summer. Um, and then there was some work that had to take place with the uh, additional condensate pumps that were needed to pump up the condensate, I mean, the uh, yes, the condensate out of the hallway units, um, which we had to because they're, uh, they were lower than the adjacent ceiling, so a pump was needed to pump it up to get it out of the building. Uh, so all of that work for the uh, electrical contractor was $3,500, uh, 3,500, 3,000, I'm sorry, $558. So those were the, uh, the allowances for Chatham, uh, the changes that went toward the allowance. So there are some other changes as well that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll review from our recommendation letter. Um, so there were, where the old unit ventilators were, there was a louver that took fresh air in from outside. So each, uh, when each unit ventilator came out, there was an insulated blank off panel that was put on to kind of insulate to create that thermal barrier to the outside. Some, uh, some rooms were missed on the drawings. So this first change order was for the general contractor to go back and get those panels and, and kind of button up those areas. So that cost was $4,056. Um, and, and then uh, the next change is uh, for Conrad, their PCO7 was the result of um, some piping that was called out to run um, the, the chilled water loop for the new, the new cooling system was called out to run into the classrooms. But in field, we realized that it would be much easier if instead of running it in the classrooms, we kind of ran it through the existing stairwell. But to make that work, we had to kind of take out the ceiling and drop the, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. We had to drop the ceiling. So the cost to do that, have the piping roughed in and, and have the, um, the piping kind of drywalled out was $4,935. Uh, $4, SB Conrad PCO 10. This was um, again some some work for the uh, the ceiling fan coil units that was needed for the drywall that wasn't shown on the drawings to take place. So that change um, it was for about uh, five or five or six units it was seven thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars. And then uh, moving on to the mechanical contractor. Again, this is some more work that had to, to uh, take, take place with the existing uh, hot water piping that needed to be ro uh, relocated. Again, it's kind of the, the engineers do their best to show the loop, but until you actually get in field and kind of take down the ceilings and you're able to see exactly where it runs, sometimes you get conflict with where new stuff um, is located, so they they had to kind of rework some of that piping. Um, there are five change orders here that I just kind of included in one cost, which which came to eleven thousand twenty seven dollars and ninety nine cents. The next change from uh, Dolan Mechanical uh, was for an existing backflow preventer and an air vent on an existing expansion take that was called out to remain. Um, they're they were fairly in, in decent shape um, and they were just called to, to remain and not be replaced. Unfortunately, during the process, the backflow preventer went bad and the air, went, air vent went bad. So we had um, the mechanical contractor replace those in the boiler room. That cost ended up being $1,696.10. The uh, next change order is again for Dolan Mechanical um, was for as a result of the existing second, second floor ductwork not being able to be used, there were new, um, previously approved by the board, there were new uh, curbs for the hoods to be relocated in ductwork. Um, as part of that, the roof decking had to be cut out to be able to get the ductwork into the existing shafts. Um, this was done by Dolan. Um, the work was actually in the scope uh, that we had kind of, uh, the district rather, had previously contracted with the roofer, but the roofer was hesitant to do it. So we're actually looking for a credit back from them. But the cost for Dolan to perform the work was $4,499.03. Uh, $4, and 
And then lastly, for Chatham Park, um, there was a uh, request from the district to procure a price. Um, there's an existing uh, network gear in the elevator machine room. Um, and uh, the state inspector this year, I guess, in, in reviewing which AR has required that the existing um, equipment be there, a cabinet installed and the equipment put inside the, the cabinet. Currently, as is uh, right now, everything is just kind of on shelves. So we procured a price from a low voltage contractor and that came to $3,360. Uh, $3, so I know that that's a lot to digest um, for Chatham, but uh, I'll open it up to any questions. So you went through a lot of numbers. Do you know what, is that what totals the 160,000 of pending change orders? Yeah, so the change orders right now, yeah, that's the, the 160,000. And then everything uh, reviewed in terms of the allowance is also reflective in, in the allowance spent. Okay, but, but what you just went over isn't one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Correct. Yes. It doesn't total one hundred and sixty because it could. There's other anything that's a potential change is in the pending, okay. whether it's being presented now or it may be presented later or it may not even become a change at all. But if we think there's a change, it's in there. And then there had been previous credits because the three hundred thousand of allocated budgeted project contingency and the contingency spent, right, the contingency spent of 128,000 reflects the 160. Is that right? What, but there was a credit on this one at some point? There, there was yes. a, yes, there was a big credit in the budget for work that was already included in the contract. So that 150,000, that was a budget line item was removed, which essentially was a credit back to the budget. There, Okay, so even with the 160 that's getting it is reflected in contingency spent, we still have more contingency remaining in our budget than what we've used. The 170 is what remains. Uh, yes, the yep. $173,000 balance is the actual balance right now, even with those pending change orders. Correct? Okay. All right. Any any other questions in regards to Chatham? Sounds like, yeah, you just keep finding some things when you look in the walls. Ch and especially if it's all drywall yeah. ceiling. So yeah. you can't, you know, <clears throat> drop ceiling like this, you can poke your head yep. up and at least look mm -hmm. as ceiling as you can. So it's really, it, those unforeseen conditions are going to happen. That makes sense. Which is why we have continued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to uh, Coopertown. So um, again, the total pending change orders right now are a little under um, 81,000 in terms of contingency balance. Um, to date, contingency is roughly around 100,000 spent. And then allowance spent is uh, around 50, 57, um, 37, three, uh, a, a, little, a little over 57,000. Of that, a good majority of that balance spent was, um, the allowance rather, was for the, um, the chiller fencing, which we had previously um, approved um, as the general contractor's change order for with the board. So the, the overall cost of the fencing was 68,393, um, and 40 of that was um, from the allowance, the $40,000 allowance for the fencing. Um, some other, so in, and, and just a quick update in terms of uh, Coopertown, um, there is some replacement damaged countertops that we're waiting on and I believe it's two rooms. Um, and then uh, two uh, sink base cabinets came with an unfinished edge. So they're gonna, they're making the new panel to put on so it'll be finished like the rest of the cabinet. So um, again, hoping to have that done in the next two to three weeks. Um, so I'll go through the allowances spent um, on Coopertown. Um, so these are all for the general contractor. Currently, um, no allowances spent for the mechanical contractor or the uh, electrical contractor to date. Um, again, 
there was on the drawing there um, was about three to five rooms of that weren't called out for the insulated panels where the old unit ventilators went. Um, so that work was performed um, to kind of get that ready and, and plaster patched over for eleven hundred dollars. Um, next, there was right off of the stage um, an auditorium. There was a vestibule uh, that in the drawings, everything else got new grid and tile. Uh, it was missed on the contract documents to get this vestibule that's kind of right near the boiler room. So in walking with Ken, we reviewed it with JR and it was determined to just take out the grid and tile and put a new um, two by four grid in there. And the, the lights were actually captured in the scope of work to work with a new two by four grid. So that was um, dem uh, dem demolished, furnished and installed. And that was $2,130 and 30, I'm sorry, excuse me, $2,130. Um, again, with the uh, exposed particle board edge, just like Chatham, we had the, the painter go in there and kind of finish the edge to protect from any kind of water droplets from the sink. Again, that was a, uh, uh, $330. There was a, um, for the roofing part of the project where the phase one roofing and the phase two roofing started, when the roofer opened up to kind of start the process, it exposed a little bit of uh, a crack, I guess, in the membrane. And when the water pulled up, it came into the building and it leaked and, and caused uh, drywall damage. So we initially had the drywall damage fixed. It didn't leak and then it leaked again. So the, the general contractor will be back later this week to fix the drywall at this bulkhead. In the meantime, the roofing contractor has um, worked with a roofing consultant on a new detail of this wall that has since been fixed. Um, so it doesn't leak anymore. And that whole wall has been wrapped with a membrane. Um, so it was a little bit about two feet just where the two phases met. So the work to kind of refinish that drywall, um, point up and paint it was $245. Um, there was actually, um, and some work not called out, we, we noticed that there was a little bit of water damage in one of the vestibules um, that we went ahead and had the general contractor fix um, and kind of repaint uh, that area. That was $200. Um, there's the new tile in the kitchen was called out to run at the uh, window height on the drawings and there's actually a wing wall that goes full height so we uh we got them to just kind of finish the whole wall to make it look like a better finished product um the cost for the the tile installer to perform that work was 592 dollars so that wraps up um all the allowances to date uh, adjustments rather for Coopertown and then um, some change orders for Coopertown are the new service conduits for the new chiller outside of the boiler room were called in on the drawings to go underneath um, and come up into the existing chase but in kind of excavating that area the existing conduits are blocked out in, in a concrete duct bank so there wasn't access to it so in order to get the conduits up and over into the boiler room for the chiller they had to go up and kind of create a unistrut rack and reroute everything um to to kind of get you know get the get the service in there so kind of a a a change infilled rather apologies the cost to do that work was eleven thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars and forty cents um the next electrical change order um so for the modular classrooms the light fixtures ordered for the project were ordered for drywall ceilings um the modulars actually have drop ceilings very similar to this so the fixtures did not work so they had to be reordered um, the fixtures that did come in that were originally specified were turned over to the district for use, maybe at another facility or school. Um, but the cost to get those new light fixtures in and get them installed was $5,160.10. And then lastly, there was a uh, request for information uh, for the project 
where there was just some conflicts in field on you know what was in field as opposed to the drawings um, and then about five uh, you know two like three to five classrooms um, there were five new fixtures that had to be uh, ordered uh, to replace the existing fixtures and the cost for that was one thousand four hundred seven dollars and forty one cents and then lastly in regards to Coopertown there was a uh, change order from the roofer for a uh, two coat sand covering system um, to prevent snow from sliding off the roof. So previously they, there were snow guards um, and the metal roof kind of had a, like a two foot channeling. So the snow guard would stop the roof. But now as the roof has been laid over and it's just kind of a very flat surface, uh, it was recommended to have this sand coating to catch the, uh, the snow. So in walking that with the roofing consultant, one of the areas um, is the gym where there's a good slope to the blacktop where the kids play. So the cost to, um, it, this cost is to basically do that whole out slope toward the blacktop as well as all uh, exterior doors, the slopes of the exterior doors. Um, so the cost to provide, uh, it's roughly around 8,500 square feet of this two-coat uh, two system of sand is uh, 42865 dollars. Uh, $42, so that is everything for Coopertown. Are there any questions? Yes, and I'm sorry, uh, phase one roofing uh, is complete. It was walked by the manufacturer of the roofing um, and we have received the warranty and closeout docs, which we'll, we'll pass along to JR here um, either this week or first thing next week. So that work is, is complete and uh, should be final build outside of this change order, this pending change order um, for next week's board meeting. And just when you were talking about the snow and sand paint treatment that that's just to prevent snow from sliding off of the roof in right. places where people are walking right okay right one giant snow guard basically yeah so instead of those little, little, little snowbirds mm -hmm. this is just uh it, it's like friction that just catches the snow and just keeps it in place so it's at it's at all doors roughly around 30 feet of double doors coming out um and then the slopes back just so you know, it doesn't get enough momentum maybe from the top of the slope to push everything down, even with the system there, so. Nobody likes to have snow nope. come pounding down <laughs> on there. Not at so all. It sounds Not at like all. a good safety feature. So I have a question, but it's probably more for um, the board, or um, is what happens with the contingency balance when we close out a project? Does that just go back into our overall budget? Does that figured out with like bank is that can get allotted for something else what's, what's in, the that process? in the case of the contingencies for both Coopertown and Chatham Park there's a phase two yeah so, so we're gonna hold on to those yes. yes in the case of something like Linwood what that does is it's going to go in and help pay for other projects as okay. we go forward so it just gets allotted into other um, mm -hmm. other places okay we Thank keep you. it in our kind of capital fund allocation right right was there any change orders at the high school phase two? Excuse me, yes, there was just uh, one credit back. We changed the boiler exhaust. Uh, the contractor actually had a great idea. Um, just it made it easier and it was better routing and just when the cost flushed out, it was $10,600 uh, less. Um, so I missed putting it on the last agenda. So that's the only one for the high school. Great, and it occurs to me that our last finance and facility meeting was took place at the high school and we had the opportunity to tour the new wing um, and I think all of the board members who were able to see it just thought it was such a fabulous mm -hmm. amenity for the school like really celebrated the music spaces and the fitness and um, it was already exciting I was there for back to school night and you already saw the students using and we heard the teachers talk about how um how much they are enjoying the space and um just a fabulous addition and yeah the great. contractors did a, a nice job it's i mean kcba did a wonderful job designing it but 
um, yeah, it, and it's jam packed every inch with <laughs> stuff in it. You know, it's amazing how quickly they fill it up, but it, it really, uh, everybody seems to enjoy it. That's great. You know, I just want to say that uh, over the last few years, we've had uh, a lot of balls up in the air, uh, construction wise, and uh, just want to uh, say uh, what a good job uh, has been done and that uh, in large part things are on time and under budget uh, uh, with the exception of supply chain issues um, and uh, I want to thank JR and also uh, uh, you guys for the work that you do. No, thank you very much. You. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, I have just a couple really quick notes. Um, you mentioned Crabtree Warpaw couldn't make it tonight. Um, they will be at our next meeting. That's November 10th um, to give us the first report on the feasibility study. Um, and additionally, JR just told me that our propane tanks down at the maintenance and transportation building have been fully inspected and they now have propane in them and starting tomorrow we'll be loading our buses from the new tanks. And lastly, a while back we had discussed food service equipment repair and we were going out for RFP for that. We did go out for RFP for that and basically didn't get any responses. So we're going to be going back out for RFP okay. for that. So um, we're making the effort. At this point, we just haven't had the takers. And that's for um, equipment or a yeah, contractor? It's fi that fixing the, the food service equipment as well as like refrigeration and freezers and things like that. Okay. I'm just surprised that that's not something that got the attention of a, a bidder, but yeah, try again. <laughs> and that's everything for this evening. We do have um, an opportunity for public comment, but I'm looking down the, around the room and thinking we have none for tonight. <laughs> so then we can adjourn. Our business is concluded. Thank you so much.